this uh, a message from the president of the United States. Seriously, this is actually a message from the president, not from President Obama. I'll let you figure out who, which president said this. He said, this is a, a message to Congress. It's an actual letter that was written to Congress by the president about enforcing the antitrust laws. He said, unhappy events abroad have taught us two simple truths about the liberty of a democratic people. The truth, the first truth is that the liberty of a democracy is not safe if the people tolerate the growth of private power to the point where it becomes stronger than their democratic state itself. That, in essence, is fascism. Ownership of the government by an individual, by a group, or by any other controlling private power. The second truth is that the liberty of a democracy is not safe if its business system does not provide employment and produce and distribute goods in such a way as to sustain an acceptable standard of living. Among us today, a concentration of private power without equal in history is growing. This concentration is seriously impairing the economic effectiveness of private enterprise as a way of providing employment for labor and capital, as a way of assuring a more equitable distribution of income and earnings among the people of the nation as a whole. And he goes on to say, statistics in the Bureau of Internal Revenue reveal the following amazing figures for 1935. Give you a little clue as to who, who wrote this. Of all corporations reporting from every part of the nation, one-tenth of one percent of them owned 52% of the assets of all of them. And to clinch the point, of all the corporations reporting, fewer than 5% of them owned 87% of all the assets in all of them. One-tenth of all the corporations reporting... Yeah, uh, okay. Oh, and, and then he says, of all the corporations reporting from every part of the country, one-tenth of 1% 1 of them earned 50% of the net income of all of them. The statistical history of modern times proves that in times of depression, concentration of business speeds up. Bigger businesses then has larger opportunities to grow still bigger at the expense of smaller competitors who are weakened by financial adversity. He says 1929 was a banner year for distribution of stock ownership, but in that year, three-tenths of 1% of our population received 78% of the dividends reported by individuals. Is this starting to sound familiar? I mean, this is, the, this is like Bernie Sanders talking about today. 47% of all American families and single individuals living alone had incomes of less than $1,000 for the year. Now you add another zero to that for today's dollars. And at the other end of the ladder, a little less than one and one half percent of the nation's families received incomes which in dollars and cents reached the same total as the incomes of the 47% at the bottom. This is Franklin Roosevelt's message to the 75th Congress in 1935. 33% of the property which was passed by inheritance was found in only 4% of all the reporting estates. We believe in a way of living in which political democracy and free pri private enterprise for profit should serve and protect each other to ensure a maximum of human liberty, not for a few, but for all. It has long been said that the freest government, if it could exist, would not be long acceptable if the tendency of the laws were to create a rapid accumulation of profit in few hands and to render the great mass of the population dependent and penniless. There is that danger that comes from that concentrated e private economic power which is struggling so hard to master our democratic government. It will, not, it will not come as some of the possessors of that private power would make the people believe from our democratic government itself. And, and he goes, I mean, this, this just, Google FDR's message to the 75th Congress. It just, he goes on and on and on. He's you know, citing all these statistics and saying, you know, it's time to enforce the Sherman Antitrust Act and start breaking up these big corporations. Just, you know, basically comes right out and says it. How do we put America back together? As Greece is in the process of putting themselves back together, how do we put America back together? I think we start with our, our these insane trade policies. And that's why I think both Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders are doing well, because they're both talking about insane trade policies.
You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 202-536-2370. There's a contrast, though. Donald Trump has the solid lock on the racist vote, whereas Bernie, back in the 60s, got arrested when he was working with CORE in Chicago.